Hi everyone, I'm Kelly Covert, and I am sitting down today with Hannah White, who is our guest artist for our casual concert that is upcoming on April 25th. Hannah, how are you today? I'm really good. How are you? Good. And um, Hannah is a violinist, and I'm so excited just to get to sit down with you, Hannah, to learn more about how you came to be a musician and sort of the, the kinds of routines you have that keep you healthy and excited about music as you uh, are traveling and things like this. So it's been a weird year for musicians, yeah? Right. With the whole pandemic, it's very different being home and away from you know, orchestra and chamber where you're used to playing around other people. So you kind of have to keep yourself motivated. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't really have the peers like listening to them next door practicing next to you or anything. So yeah, that's a little different. But um, my routine before like anything, which I didn't used to do, is now we're doing some four octave scales <laughs> before <laughs> anything, which has really helped me and then some techniques. So that's mm -hmm. kind of what I do before I practice or anything. Mm -hmm. And I believe in like staying like healthy-ish and drinking a lot of water. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you've been performing with big orchestras for a really long time. When did you start performing with, you know, like on stages like this? Mm -hmm. So I started violin when I was seven years old and I played with the Milwaukee Symphony when I was nine. I wow. played box double. So I think, so it, that was like my first like orchestra I played with. I was playing with a youth orchestra before that. But yeah, and then recently I just played with the San Francisco Chamber Orchestra and then the Dallas Symphony. And mm -hmm. then I get to play with you guys and I'm really excited. So. Well, and we're excited to have you. And you know, how we were able to connect with you was through the Sphinx organization. And you are a Sphinx winner. So why don't you tell us about what that means to you? Uh, it, it means a lot. And I'm very thankful for Sphinx for all they've done for me and giving me such, you know, amazing opportunities like playing with you guys which I wouldn't just get on my own. So that's, you know, that's the big perks about it. And mm -hmm. I'm just very thankful for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and you are, you're currently still in school, right? Where are you going to school? Mm -hmm. So I study at the Colburn Conservatory in Los Angeles with Mr. Lipset. Mm -hmm. And I'm a junior. I'm going to be a senior soon. And unfortunately, I had my junior year during this whole pandemic. So it's, I've been just home. Mm -hmm. But I'm excited to go back in, yeah, very soon. Yeah. Well, and so are, is this your, you said you played with a San Francisco chamber orchestra. Have you been able to do a lot of performances this year or have you had to sort of shift all of that? Right. So it started off a little bit more dead and I had to do concerts through Zoom mm -hmm. with Sphinx. Um, but the most recent, I think... Well, I played with Dallas Symphony in November. That's kind of where it started. And now I've been asked to do other concerts. Mm -hmm. So I guess it just kind of picked back up in November mm -hmm. for me. Cool. Yeah. Well, and so I'm curious to know, how do you balance school and traveling to perform? I mean, it seems like that is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, for for me, my program, I'm I'm blessed in that I'm doing the performance, so I'm not a bachelor, so it's not I don't have all the other, you know, things to do. I do have orchestra chamber, and a social media class I took, which I love because I'm into social media, <laughs> and you know a couple other like humanities or something like that. But um, they're pretty flexible in having me like do assignments at a different time if I'm out of town mm -hmm. or I just don't focus on it at all until I get what I have to done because you know at the end of the day I think a performance is a really that's something very important so I try to just let go of anything else I have going on at the time mm -hmm. I don't know that's kind of what I do probably not good for the sky <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure they're proud of you, though. Like, I, I think to have a student who is out and about p playing professionally, like, certainly reflects well on them. So it's a, it's a give and take for sure. And I think both of you are probably uh, 
benefiting from the fact that you're that you're playing. I'm curious to know, like the piece, the piece that you're playing for us. Why don't you tell everybody the name of the piece that you're playing with, with us? Oh boy. Okay, so I'm playing Joseph Valone's Violin Concerto Opus Two, Number One. And what's interesting about it is that I actually didn't even know him as a composer or knew he exists until I was given this performance opportunity. So I was like, who is this? And why does his like, music sound like early Haydn or like Mozart? Mm-hmm. But apparently he's like the black Mozart. Oh, and yeah. yeah. And I started, um, you know, kind of doing a little bit of research about him because I do want to know a little bit who this guy is. And it turns out that he actually inspired Mozart because he wrote before Mozart and a lot of people, you know, it's just kind of interesting how their music is very much both, I don't know, they're both very impressive to me Mm -hmm. and they're relatively like similar Mm -hmm. and how one was so like in the light and one, like, I didn't even know who he was. I think that's very interesting. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, so starting to learn the music, um, like three weeks ago, I realized that he's a little, he's very interesting. He makes my life a little difficult. <laughs> that he thinks. <laughs> yeah, he puts like the weirdest fingerings going up and like there's no right way to do it. Mm-hmm. I guess it's very, and you could tell he was like a, a prodigy or something because he was, at, what I heard is that he would play his own music and conduct it. So I think he was thinking like, because it was so easy for him. Um, Yeah, it just makes it very hard for me. I don't know, just some leaps. It's just very out of the blue. But other than that, it's like a very great piece. And I I really like it a lot, Mm -hmm. so. Well, and you said you've been working on it for a few weeks now. How do you learn a new piece like this from a new composer so quickly? Right. I just kind of have to push myself. Ideally, I try not to learn things that quickly because <laughs> mm-hmm. I want it to be more solid, but I force myself to kind of, you know, it's, I just kind of insatuate myself with it, you know, just practicing that only mm-hmm. sort of thing. I don't learn anything else on the side. Um, I, there's one recording on YouTube they have that was posted about four months ago. Thank God. <laughs> um, so I was listening to that and trying to like get it, myself used to it because if you hear something like Tchaikovsky violin concerto it's kind of in your system because you kind of heard it before Mm -hmm. there's there's like no background like I didn't even know who the composer was it's just Mm -hmm. very weird but um his patterns are pretty easy to memorize because it's like in the fingers it's not like Brahms or something where you're like leaping around that many times so Mm -hmm. yeah well, I think we're, it, we're excited to perform it with you. And, you know, we're really passionate at Symphoria about programming music from mm-hmm. uh, diverse composers. And so to have a black composer from such a long time ago, it's it's really rare. And mm-hmm. um, we're excited to highlight his music with you. Now, um, I had a colleague of mine who was doing a little bit of digging, and she actually sent me some questions for you that I thought were interesting she said that that you she heard you like to practice your violin in a very special place in your house that some people might consider a little unusual tell us about that (laughs) okay so she's talking about the bathroom (laughs) so and there's a specific bathroom that that i practice I like the practice. I don't know. It's the furthest away from everyone. I like my privacy when I practice. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know. The bathroom, I got this bond, the connection. <laughs> I'm know. connected with the bathroom. Well, and I wonder too, like, like when you're at school, you usually practice in a practice room, which is a much smaller space mm-hmm. and there's not a lot of distractions. So it seems like it's, it maybe is a little bit like that too, right? Yeah, a little bit like that. Um, But that was very weird for me, going from, like, my bathroom to, like, going to school and having to practice in a practice room. I was like, I do not like this. (laughs) But, (laughs) and sometimes I'll even go in my, because there's sweet meats, so I had Mm -hmm. two roommates. 
And then I'll go in that bathroom and start practicing, but they will always need it. So yeah, I was like, course. this is not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> you need to like reserve your own private bathroom for practicing wherever you yeah. are. <laughs> well, Hannah, that, that is so funny. And um, we'll, we'll see what we can do about finding you a bathroom for warming up in uh, <laughs> while you're here with us. <laughs> want to make you feel like, like you're at home, but we are looking forward to having you. And mm -hmm. um, this concert is on April 25th at 3 p.m. part of our casual series and it's April in Paris so it's going to be a beautiful um, concert and we're really pleased to have you joining us. I'm really excited to play with you guys it's such an honor. Thank you. <laughs>